No, not yet. That's good. I mean, if, as long as you can see me, I, I don't, it, it doesn't make a difference to me. Yeah, man. Hey, we're on. So okay. we'll rip it. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're trying to have a, a little glitch here uh, fix, but um, this is DJ Thielen, CEO of Fortune Foreclosures, founder of Flipping On Demand, and your host, the DJ Thielen Live. Today, I have on a guy that is going to rock your world, um, a buddy of mine that is going to share with you guys how to improve your life through personal development and many other things. And as you know, our show is about allowing you and helping you to be more successful in your life and business. And so welcome on, uh, Chris Rude. What's up, buddy? Hey, man, I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I can see you. You can't see me. Um, if you want to, um, Chris, maybe disconnect and reconnect and see yep. if that. No problem. Hold on one okay. second. All right, you guys. So this is going to be an awesome show, man. Uh, I'm excited to have this guy on. There we go. Now I'm. All right. There we go. There we go. So um, excited to have y'all, man. How's it going? Good. Good. I, I can't. I can't see my. I mean, I can see myself, but I still can't see you. But I'm in a smaller corner now. Where can you see me? Or yep, I got gotcha. you. Okay, but that's good. I don't have to see you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect, man. It's perfect. Um, Hey man, so um, so audio wise, yeah, just make just speak up a little bit. But hey, so share it to people, Chris. Um, you know, really, uh, just a snapshot on who you are, where you come from. Okay, so my name's Chris Root. I'm 37 years old. I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana, a small town here in South Louisiana. Um, been an entrepreneur my whole life. <laughs> was selling baseball cards out of the back of my book sack when I was in fourth and fifth grade, trying to, you know, trying to hustle and 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 make a make a sale, right? And um, always knew I was going to do something as a as an entrepreneur. And basically, when I was a, when I was around twenty, I think twenty years old, I was a a junior in college, and I was working for my parents in the oil field. I, I told myself while I was in college, like, look, I want to start my own business, right? So I, I started my own business. I by by chance, I went and got my oil change at at one of these quick lubes for um, you know for my dad. He needed to change the oil, and I was watch them change the oil. And I had ideas of trying to like figure out a way to start a business. And I, I started thinking of ideas. So I was like, I bet you if somebody went around and went to people's houses and, and offices and changed their oil that, uh, you know, they could probably make a lot of money. So what I did was I borrowed 120 bucks from my dad, bought a set of wrenches, bought and some, uh, some oil bins to collect oil and, and some oil and filters. And then I made some cards and I started going around to these different oil, oil field fleet accounts that had like 20, 30, 40, 50, hundred vehicles and started selling them on how I can come meet them and change their oil at their job sites where they could save some time and they don't have to go and bring their vehicles to get serviced. So got started getting a bunch of clientele and, and um, did that for about two years. By the time I graduated college, I was actually making close to hundred grand a year, changing oil and washing cars and doing wax jobs. And, and uh, I got into windshield repairs and replacements out of the back of my truck. I was making really good money. So I was like, man, I'm not going to get a job. Uh, <laughs> you know, my buddies were getting out of school, getting, getting jobs. You know, they had a bachelor's degree in business and finance, whatever it, it may be management. They were getting jobs, making 35, 40 grand a year. And here I am and making a hundred grand a year. I was like, I'm just going to keep doing this. So did that for, um, did that for a couple of years while I was out of college. I was like, man, I, I got to stop chasing all of these oil changes and windshields. I need to get my own shop. Right. So unbeknownst to me, there was a guy that was distressed in my area that wasn't paying his landlord the rent. And I found out about it and I talked to the landlord and she kicked him out and let me move in and rent it. So that was my first shop and I rented and I started like I, I tripled my income. I say tripled. I probably doubled my income um, by having that shop. So I was leasing that shop, started making a lot of money. I, this is probably another year passes by. Uh, I'm about 24 years old now, 23, 24. You remember Hurricane Katrina that hit New Orleans? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the story how I got into real estate. From, so this happened by chance. So I'm, I'm 23, 24. Hurricane Katrina comes in. I think this is like 2005, 2006. Real estate market is like on fire around the country. Hurricane knocks out New Orleans, displaces hundreds of thousands of people, probably millions of people. So everybody moves west of New Orleans, which is Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and Houston. So 
all these influx of people come into town and there's not really a whole lot of inventory, right? So what, you know, just like I do, when inventory is tight and demand's high, what happens to real estate, right? It explodes. So I, I'm noticing people around me, I had built a, let me back up, I had built a house like maybe two, three, four years, well, about three or four years before that, right when I got out of college, a little cute little spec home, put like $25,000, $30,000 down, and my house in the, in the past three or four years almost doubled in value. So I was like, man, I, I, we need to sell. I told my wife, I said, we need to sell this house. Like, we can make a fortune. So we painted the painted a few rooms, painted the kitchen, landscaped the front yard, put it on the MLS, and sold it within like 60 days. Closed it within 60 days. I made $125,000 at, at 24 years old in my first flip doing my own house. And that was like my first taste of real estate. Wow, like, man. Yes. At 24 years old, I was like, geez, th th this is where it's at. So made that money, right? Took that money and bought an, a second location. I actually bought a, a super uh, awesome location here in Lafayette off of what's called Johnson Street, which is like the major corridor in and out of Lafayette, where it's like 60,000 cars a day pass. <clears throat> they had a distressed seller. He was, you know, having tax problems. He's on drugs. Reached out to him, made him an offer, bought his location. Um, got, so I got that second location. So when I sold my house, I bought another house, which was a pre foreclosure in another hot neighborhood, bought that house, renovated it, lived in that house for probably a couple years, flipped that, made $60,000, took that money, dumped it into another shop. So I bought a third location, ended up doing a land deal, flipped and made like 20 grand in I think like a month and um, kept dumping that into new locations. So I had like like four locations at one time. So I had like the, the biggest oil change, car wash and uh, mechanic shop and glass shop in Lafayette at one time, right? And now here I am, I'm like 27, 28 years old. I'm, I'm probably making, you know, $350,000, $500,000 a year with all my benefits and stuff. And I'm like, you know, this is great. And I had like 34, 33 employees at one time. So I kind of forgot about real estate because I was making so much money with my quick lubes. Well, I did that for, you know, till I was about 27, 28. I was like, let me get back into real estate. Took all the cash I was making for my, my quick lube car wash and mechanic shops. I started buying up single family homes off of MLS. I mean, this is a, this is when things were booming around here in this area because the oil field was booming. Oil was like one hundred dollars a barrel, one hundred and twenty eight dollars a barrel. Bought a bunch, made a bunch of ton of offers on MLS, and I would I was buying marginal deals, buying at 80, 85, 75 cents on a dollar. And I thought, man, I thought this is actually good deals, and I didn't know any better. I didn't know how to buy direct to seller back then. I didn't know how to buy at wholesale prices back then. So bought about two and a half, three million dollars worth of single family homes in MLS. And um, right around that same time, I, bought, I did that for about two years, made good money. I was making like 10 grand a month, positive cash flow, actually a little bit more than that. But right around the same time, oil went from $128 a barrel all the way down to $28 a barrel. You remember when the oil field went bust? I'm sure yeah, yeah. And it was devastating. We lost like 22,000 jobs in Lafayette. Everybody like moved to Florida or Texas to find new work. Like it was mayhem around here. So a lot of the people that were renting my houses, they left. And I, and I didn't buy like cheap little houses that were like 200 bucks a month from the bank. Like I was buying nice single family homes that were hundred and you know, $125,000, $150,000 house that were worth 200 grand, right? You weren't, you like, weren't buying it, stuff in Flint, Michigan. No, I was buying like, nice, <laughs> this is like, you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? I was back then, I wasn't as sophisticated as I am now as far as an investor. I made a lot of mistakes. I bought, I bought it off of emotion because it looked good versus what, what's actually needed and wanted in the, in the marketplace as far as rentals. But lot went half of my rentals went vacant. I started negative cash flowing on my houses and I was freaking out. And then my shops at this time started going down in sales because, you know, we were, you know, the, all of Lafayette was in a depression, started taking a huge, started taking like every year it was getting worse and worse with the sales with my shops until it was like, I was actually breaking even or losing money every month. But right around the same time as this was going on, I got into wholesaling, right? So if you guys are watching and don't know what wholesaling is, I'm sure most of you do. It's the, it's the art of technology of finding heavily discounted off-market properties for motivated sellers, right? So hired, I found about, uh, about wholesaling on YouTube and hired a bunch of mentors. Well, actually, before that, before I even hired mentors, I tried to wholesale on my own. I, I, I got the concept. I wholesaled a couple of my own properties, made $2,500, five grand here, but I was very inconsistent with it. So I said, let me hire three mentors. So I hired three mentors back to back to back. I crushed it in their programs. 
I was one of their top students. I even went work. I went and worked in their sales department to enroll students to help them enroll new students because I was really good at it. Um, so it was a perfect storm because I, you know, I was in a depressed market. So you know, as just as much as I do, if you're in a if you're in a market that's down, right? There's going to be a lot of distress. There's going to be a lot of deals. Right? Yeah. So there was deals everywhere. So I mean, I'm not kidding you. Uh, you know, I was I was losing. We were probably losing 10, 12, 15 grand a month at one time. With between my shops and and all of my single family homes that were that I had bought and you know bought, I just paid too much for them. I, I didn't need to be buying those high end rentals. But right around that same time, I started wholesaling. I started making like 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars a month wholesaling. Right. So that covered all of my losses that I was having with my single family homes and my shops. So from there, I kind of I, I walked. I never forget the first month I made a lot of money in wholesaling. I made forty seven thousand dollars part time while still working at my quick lube and mechanic shops. I made forty seven grand on the side. And I was like, hell with these shops. Like, you know, I, it was I couldn't make hardly make 40. I, I don't think I've ever the most I'd ever made at the shops was like 30 grand in one month. And I think we when you were and when you, you know, Chris, and when and when you have the shops, right, like a conventional um, um, business that like storefront and all of that, you know, you have a lot of expenses, you have, you know, space, you have overhead, you have employees, you have workers, you have, I mean, a lot of expenses, tools, uh, you know, just a lot marketing. Um, you have, and so you're doing, you're wholesaling where basically, you know, you can don't really have to, you know, you don't have to use your own money. Right. And you can obviously make these huge profits. So you're probably thinking, damn, man, I'm like, when, when you compare the two, right. From yeah, having, I, I, I was in I was, debt. I mean, to buy the three, the, the four shops I had, well, I, I actually got out of one of them. So I had three of them at the time when all this is going on. I mean, one of the shops cost me, uh, like I paid 800, 860,000 for it, which I had a bank loan. I had put 20% down. The other shop I paid 1.35 million for. Another shop was a quarter of a million that I paid. So like I was in a lot of debt to have these shops, right? And and when things were even in the heyday, when things were really good, I think the most I ever made with the shops is like maybe 25, 30 grand in one month net. But like it was a lot of headache, a lot of moving parts, a lot of employees. Yes. Lots of headache. And then for me to go and just go part time. Lots of lots of lots of babysitting. But, oh, 100 percent. I mean, you got to think <laughs> the kind of people I employ in the oil change and car wash business. I mean, it's not Harvard graduates. Um, you know, I, I'm sitting here. And I and I make forty seven thousand part time, with no headaches, just me and a little bit of marketing money in my cell phone, just negotiating deals and and selling deals to investors. I'm like the hell with these shops. I I called all my managers. I said, hey, I gave them my keys. I said, I'm not coming back. Only call me if somebody dies. I don't want to come back. So, <laughs> so I, That's like me, man. <laughs> so I I went I started I went doing it started doing it full time and I started averaging you know. When my first year, part time, my first year, I made three hundred and like forty seven thousand dollars or three hundred seventy four thousand, either three seventy four or three forty seven. My first year of wholesaling, part time. So I, that's when I was like, you know, and I still came back and forth to the shops. So I had to check on them, but I realized that like I needed to go all in. So I just, I literally just stopped going to the shops and did it full time. And then from there, man, we we doubled and tripled that, and. um from there, I went and I started a coaching company showing people how to do this, how to wholesale real estate. And um, from there, got uh, let me back up three, two and a half, three years ago. You know, I went to Grant Cardone's 10x Growth Con one, the very first one they had in Miami three years ago or two. Yeah, years. yeah. And it, it literally changed my whole mindset, right? I watched Grant, and Grant's from the same town or not far from the same town. I'm from here in Louisiana, in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and we have some mutual friends. And, um, so I, hey man, I got, I got the 10 X hat right here, baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right. I still can't see you, but I don't, can, can the viewers see both of us or is it? Yeah. Different? Yeah. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Um, so I went, went to 10 X growth con, bought the super VIP, me and my wife and man, it blew, it blew my mind. Like it was like going to church, but for business. Right. It was like, I was always like, like a, a closet 10 X or always, everything I did was always 10 X. Like I never do anything in small quantity. Like if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go big. And when I got to go watch Grant and all his speakers, I was like, man, this is this is freaking awesome. Like it's like he made it OK to want to freaking crush business in life. Like, you, you know, just as much as I do, like most of your friends that you grow up with, if you're trying to do big things and you're around those guys, they, they kind of they don't really um, they don't really understand, especially if they're not entrepreneurs. They don't really understand what you're doing. They think you're crazy. Right. 
Yeah. So when you get around a room and a group of people that are all like entrepreneurs, high level mindset, trying to make a lot of money, trying to improve their life, trying to be the best version of themselves, like it's like very, very high level masterminding. It really like just blew my mindset. So I was like, you know what? We're going to take this wholesaling to the next level. I'm going to start a coaching company. So after the event, um, Grant actually I had a meeting with Grant the next morning and went and meet with Grant and we uh, we talked and we we basically made a deal. I, I got my own show in his network on GCTV called Into the Hustle where I do a lot of training. Um, I got interviewed by him and then I sponsored GrowthCon the following year and I, I'm sponsoring GrowthCon this year. And from there, man, I just, my coaching company's, you know, blowing up. I got students all over the co country that are killing it. Um, my wholesaling business is killing it. We're now in, you know, doing mobile home parks. We're, we're about to buy our fourth, third and fourth mobile home park we're about to close on here in the next uh, 30 days. We're, we're buying tons of single family homes direct to seller from our wholesaling business at 40, 50 cents on the dollar. I mean, just ridiculously good equity positions all because why? Because I have a wholesaling business. And that's what I want to emphasize to you guys that are watching this. If you're going to get into real estate, it's not, it's, it's not essential. It's imperative. It's not essential. It's imperative. It's absolutely imperative that you start with a wholesaling business because the deals are not on MLS. The deals are direct to seller. And I know that because I'm that idiot buyer that was buying all my deals on MLS that didn't know any better. I'm actually paying for that to this day. In two weeks, we got, I'm, I'm selling a deal that I bought six years ago on MLS. I'm taking a $22,000 loss on a deal I should have never bought on MLS. I got to stroke a check for $22,000 just to get out of it because it's, cause I, I bought it wrong. It all goes back to buying right, right? I bought a book called The Source of the Deal. Uh, it's all about wholesaling and buying right and going direct to seller. And the point is, if you don't have that marketing channel set up to better go direct to seller, then you're basically going to try to buy your deals on MLS. And I'm not going to say you can't get good deals on MLS. You can. It's just a lot harder. The deals are all off market direct to seller. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, and I <clears throat> to, to back up, you know, you said a few things, man, that I took a, a couple notes on. Man, the first thing is um, we got a lot more in common, man, than I knew. So baseball card wise. I used to go buy, uh, there was a baseball card shop. I used to go buy baseball cards. Um, I, it is so funny, man. I remember this story out of the penny box, right? So I'd buy out of the penny box. And I remember, I remember one time I bought one out of the penny box and I sold it for $2 and 50 cents. It was an Andy Van Slyke rookie card. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and, and so it's so funny, man, like talking to you about that because you look back and go, you know, that's where it kind of starts at, at a young age. Like I grew up, you know, lo very loving family, but very poor financially. So I was always looking like, man, how can I make some money? How can I make, you know, a quarter of 50 cents? Um, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, so that's funny, man, that you were kind of cut from that cloth too. We got to talk more about that off, off camera. But, um, you know, the, the second thing that, um, really that you said that's really important man is you know i talked about it the other day as far as our our energy our our vibration and yeah. when we're when we're vibing at a a 70 and that's our temperature um we have to get around people that are at a 300 400 500 you know and you you hit it you know a lot of times that's mentors that's a coach somebody that has done it that's been there that is is you know has a temperature control their their thermostat is set at 500 and if you're at 70 or even 50 the only way to get that temperature um you know you can look at the 70 as income uh maybe mindset whatever but the only way to get that up is you're not going to do it on your own people that say they can and it, you have to get around people that been there done it that have that higher temp set you know a mentor like you said some great mentors that can actually turn your temperature up and get you to basically get a, a um, you know, a new comfort zone. Is that, do you agree with that? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, you're touching on a, a, one of my favorite books. He talks about this, uh, Max, uh, Max Malt, Max Maltz, the um, Psycho Cybernetics, written by Max Maltz. Well, I, I have to look it up. But anyway, it's Psycho Cybernetics. He talks about this, your thermostat, right? And raising that thermostat. And it's all about uh, self-belief and, you know, things that you believe about yourself will manifest, you know, in your life. It's all about belief systems, right? But guys, if you get around certain people, you know, and then you have to humble yourself too to, to, to really want to take it to the next level. Like you have to know that you don't know. 
you have to know that there's people out there that that, that know more than you and have more than you. So you, you know, some people are not some people are not willing to be the stupidest person in the room. They always want to be the top dog. Um, you you want to try to get around people that are doing way better than you, and that takes some some humility. Mm-hmm. That, that takes that takes humility, right? So. Um, Oh, we lost, we lost him. He'll be back on you guys. Stay with me one sec. He'll, he'll jump. Chris will jump back right back on. Um, here he comes. Yep. I'm back. There we go. Now I can see you. All right. All right. Um, so takes, take some, uh, you were saying take some humility. It takes humility. Like most, a lot of people, that's why they want to hire a coach. They feel like I'm too good to hire a coach or like, I'm going to feel like I'm less of a person if I hire somebody that knows more than me. Um, I know that goes to the mindset of a lot of people because I, I, it used to be my mindset. We like, why do I need to hire somebody as a coach, you know? And, um, but once you get past that and you realize that when you get around people that are higher level than you or have a higher income bracket or have a higher level mindset and you hang around them and you, you, you vibrate around them, like your, your frequency, your energy, your vibration, do you elevate by default? You, I mean, I know it's, yeah, everybody says this, you're the, the average of your five closest friends. Dude, listen, if you, if you hang around a bunch of gangbangers, you're going to become a gangbanger, right? By default. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're a, if you're a, just an average Joe and you just hang around a bunch of say billionaires, I guarantee within probably three to five years you'll be a, a millionaire if not, if if not shorter, right? Because you are the company you keep. So you, if you get around certain people that are doing better than you or that have what you want, you're you're just level up. Your your thermostat will rise to their their level of temperature. Mm-hmm. So I love that you said that because it's 100 percent true. Like you. You have to work in order for your outside world to get better. Your, your outside world has to, the only way your outside world gets better is the inside world gets better. You know, that's why I'm huge on personal development in, my, in our coaching program. Like we're huge, huge on personal development. Um, we want our students to work on themselves harder than they work on the business because the, the biz, if you work on yourself harder than you work on the business, the business will increase by default because you become more high level, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, I, you know, and it's funny, man. I, I, and, and I know that you, you, you uh, have probably have a twist on this. Yeah, everyone wants to have, right? Like, oh, if I, and I know that you deal with this, so you're going to laugh. Um, people come in there, oh, you know, if I can just do a deal, right? It's going to solve all my problems. Yeah. And they and they think that that's going to be a solution when in actuality, that's been their problem the whole time is that, um, you know, it's a scarcity mindset, right? It's like, let me just do a deal. But everyone wants to have and then, do things and then be, they got it backwards. When it's more of a be, do, have, you have to, you have to become the person that you need to become and then start doing the things you need to do. Um, you know, be it the, the B could be, um, like what are you big on? Like, uh, having a daily routine. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, it's, you know, if you read the compound effect, the slight edge, the some yep. books like you have to have, you are your habits and routines guys. If you don't have great habits, then you're not gonna be a great person. I mean, it's as simple as that. So just like what you said, be, do, have, right? It's a triangle. You know, you gotta be the person you wanna be in order to do the things you need to do in order to have the things you wanna have. So you gotta be more, you gotta do more in order to have more. Like you said, everybody just wants the have part, but the be and do have to become before the have. Yeah, absolutely, man, 100%. Hey, uh, so let's get into um, the, uh, we, we could shoot, man. We could, we could talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, share with me what, um, I want to hear you, you know, we all have our own story and, and a lot of people know mine. Share with me your story on what, uh, obviously you've said some things, but what really changed your mindset? Like, like, how about this? A lot of people know who Grant Cardone is, right? Um, He's all over the place, dude. He's like Waldo. Um, you know, you look everywhere. It's like, oh, there. I mean, you look, you're watching a World Series game. He's back there with a 10X hat and a flag. You know? yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, the dude's everywhere, which is genius. Um, He's um, a genius marketer for sure. Oh, man. You buy a hat and you're getting, e- I mean, I bought a few hats and I'm getting emails and calls and, you know, Cardone University and I'm on the phone with guys like, whoa, man, how'd this happen? Um, but, um, uh, but share like being around, j- let's just take him for example, cause a lot of people know who he is, how, like being around him, what did, what did it, um, do, you know, for you, um, from a, you know, energy vibe, um, kind of like, what did you see in him that maybe, um, made you want to kind of take your, 
uh, game to a new level? That's a great question. So he, what Grant does, I mean, obviously when you get around Grant, he's a, an electric personality. He's a magnetic personality. Like he's, he's larger than life. When you get around him, you know you're around great, greatness when you're around him. You just get that sense. Um, what he does, at least what he's done for me, I was already like I was already doing big things like, I, you know, everything I would touch would like do big. Like I had I I'd started those lube shops, I had the biggest lube shop when I, when I started started a wholesaling business. I had one of the, had the biggest, probably one of the biggest wholesaling business in Louisiana. Um, but when I got around him, he validated and this is the key point. He validated what I was doing was right. So it reinforced the actions that I was already taking and made me double down on them because most people that you get around like dude what are you trying to do like you think you're superman you're trying to you're trying to take over the world you're trying you're doing too much or why are you trying to make all that money why you need to make that kind of money or why are you doing this yeah because that's the normal mindset that's the average like grant would say the average mindset right but the 10x mindset or the you know somebody that's wanting to do big things it's like they just they're an entrepreneur they can't help but to want to do big things right and um he validates he validates you as a person like, Hey dude, like it's okay to go do big things. Like you don't have to listen to your mom and dad telling you, no, go get a job or, or are you trying to play too big? Or you, you're, uh, you're doing too much, right? Mm -hmm. He validates you as a being to like, Hey dude, like you're on the right track. You're doing exactly what you need to be doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. You know, when <clears throat> we all need people, uh, you know, that's an important thing, man, because you know, when, when you're an entrepreneur and you're a business owner and things, and, and you have people like, 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 like yourself, right? That your, your people are looking up to you and you're expending so much energy. You're breathing so much life into other people. You have that, that while we're doing that, we also have to realize that we need people breathing into us that yeah. are, that, that are our mentors, that are our, we can look up to, right? So we're getting filled so that we can turn around and then serve and fill, you know, other people, right? Yep. So um, no, man, that that's huge. I mean, listen, how do you deal? Um, how do you deal with, um, you know, anyone that's had, you know, a, a level of success, um, you know, modest or, or, or great level of success obviously has, um, you know, naysayers. You're going to have people that that um, haters. Right. How do you um, how do you personally um, deal with that? And how do you recommend uh, people that. If they have, you know, it could be, you know, family members, it could be uh, someone on the Internet, it could be, uh, you know, the, your friends, it could be all the above. <laughs> yeah, it could be it could be people that you don't even know. It's like they said this. It's like I don't even know who that who they are. Right. Yeah. Um, but how do you now knowing what you know now outside of, you know, where when maybe you would have, um, you know, at the end, you know, right, we want to attack them. Right. And, and go and jump in and. And, but how do you handle uh, that kind of stuff now? You have to just understand in the back of your mind that that's your, that's actually your level of success is how many haters you have. So like you just have to, it's a reverse think, right? It's a different kind of think about it. So if you're getting haters, then you know, you're on the right track. Getting those and you're, yeah. you're getting attention. If you're not getting any haters, you're not doing, you're probably not playing big enough. You're not playing a big enough game. Um, so that's how I think with it, you know, with my haters, like I just, I just block and delete, block and delete and just move on. And I just, man, I, I and I, and I want to flourish and prosper as a person, right? The more I flourish and prosper, then you're going to attract more of those types of people. So you, you just have to understand that's part of the game. And that's just, that's like, there's nothing you, you can't get away from that. Like, I think people like, they don't want to attract any attention to themselves, but you, you that, there's nothing you could do to, to get away from it. You're, as soon as you get some level of success, you're going to attract some attention. And you're going to get people that are insecure, who've given up on life and who are, hate you because you're doing things that they wish they could do. And that's why they hate you for it. Hmm. That's and so make, good. Man. And you make them wrong by your level of action and success because it, it basically makes them wrong for them not going out because they know innately that's what they should have did. And they gave up and they just hate you for it because you, they're living vicariously through you. Hmm. Wow, man. That's so good. I'm actually take, writing some notes down. So what do you, um, let's talk about some things that you, from a personal development side, um, what, are, what are some of the, uh, obviously we talked about, you know, daily routine, uh, miracle, miracle morning, uh, you know, kind of stuff. 
uh, you know, vision board, writing out a perfect day. Um, what are some of the things that you uh, teach your students and people that you mentor as far as uh, transforming their thinking, transforming their mindset that they that anyone watching this could take some tips from you and, and start implementing right away and do? Love that. So that's my favorite topic. Is real estate is not even my favorite topic. Personal development is my favorite topic. Um, man, it's all about mind, body, spirit, right? Everybody's work. So most people I know just work on one of those things. Like you go to the gym, right? I just got back from the gym. You see all these guys that are, you know, they're so beefed up on steroids or you know working out so much, and they look like a, you know a bunch of meatheads, but they're dumb as rocks, right? Or they're broke yeah. as a joke, right? So are are their are their family life is in, in ruins, or you know so. My point to you is, like I tell my students, you got to work on your mind. Sorry, I had a you. Hey, that's okay, man. You're he'll come back here. Uh, anyway, all right, there, there so, you go, buddy. Yeah, so you you've got to work on your mind, your body, and your spirit. So what I tell if you because as a as a being, I I believe that we're spiritual beings. I don't think we're we're not we're not you know humans. We're spiritual beings having a humanoid existence. You're not a human having a spiritual existence. You're a spiritual being having a human existence. You don't see you don't see monkeys and elephants talking on an iPhone. What's one of that? They're talking about high level stuff, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not because we're, we have big brains, guys. You're a spiritual being. I mean, most people that have any type of faith and religion or anything understand that we're not we're not that. So I digress. But what I'm trying to get to is that you have to break down who you are as an individual. If you know that you have a mind, which we think with. You're in a body, which that's an animal body that you got to take care of, and you are a spiritual being. So that's the three component parts of a person. If you work on all three of those, then you're going to expand your life, and you're going to start living to your fullest potential. Because if I'm worth $100 million, but I'm 100 pounds overweight, you think I'm living to my fullest potential? Mm. No. So it, it's, it all comes turnkey. Like, you, you've got to take care of your body. I do a lot of fasting. Like, I wake up at 5. So this is what my routine looks like. I wake up at 5, 5.30. I read, I drink my coffee. I, I get my, uh, you know, my, um, what's the coffee? I, I get my bulletproof coffee. Bulletproof, my, man. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Bulletproof with my coconut MCT oil with my, um, with my butter, my, 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 uh, ghee butter. Right. And I put it inside of my coffee. So that's real healthy fats. Cause I do a lot of a keto and, and intermittent fasting. So I wake up early, I'm drinking my coffee. Then I'm, I'm, I start reading. I read mindset books. You know, I just finished Patty. Give me that book. This is one of my books I just finished. Great book on on mindset. Guys, highly recommend it. Mind to Matter. Mind to Matter. Unbelievable book. It's all about uh, you know how you are, you, how you put off energy as a spiritual being, and like you actually can, you know, anything. It's all physics, right? It's all breaking down into basic science and physics. I won't get into it, but I read for about an hour, hour and a half. You know, the kids get up. Me and my wife, you know, we've been married for twenty years. There she is, right there. Say hello. Hey. <laughs> so we have five kids together and um, we've been married for 20 years. And um, so in the mornings are kind of crazy. So we get up, get the kids dressed. She brings them to school. Then we meet at the gym where we start working on our what? Our body, right? I work out every morning. Then, and I haven't eaten yet. I don't eat. The only thing I drink, I drink my coffee, and I, I get my coconut oil and I work out. And I still haven't eaten. And today, today is what, uh, it's 12. I still haven't eaten anything all day long. I won't eat till about two o'clock. So I work out, I haven't eaten. Then from there, I go to my office, you know, check on all the leads, check on job sites and deals. And then, so I start working on my business, which I think is spiritual. You may not agree with that. Working is spiritual, guys. If you don't work, you're going to hate yourself. You know, getting things done makes you happy. The doing this goes back to be, do, have. The doing this behind things is spiritual. The most productive people I know are the happiest. Why? Because it's a spiritual activity. Going out and getting things done makes you feel good spiritually because you feel accomplished. You mm -hmm. feel adding value to people's lives, adding value to the workplace. So I'm going out and I'm working on myself spiritually by what? Doing a bunch of stuff, getting stuff done, helping people. Um, I'm tithing all the time. You know, we give back to our church, which is a spiritual activity. Then, you know, I'm going to masterminds all the time. I'm spent, we probably spend a hundred grand a year in masterminds, you know, getting around high level people to help what with my mind, right? Which goes back to three component parts. So you see how my, my day goes. So it's, it's mind, body, spirit, mind, body, spirit. And I get that in a routine of working that every single day, then my life expands, right? So that how is it, how is that, 
how has that changed? Um, you know, because you were doing things uh, before, uh, before you had that routine and, and had the understanding how these things all tie together, right? How, how are things different now um, as opposed to um, then? Is it, you, do you think, do you, are, you, are you more, are you just uh, in a better flow, um, you know, happier, more consistently? What do you notice as opposed to when you were younger and you had the businesses going and, you know, the oil thing and then you were wholesaling and now you're more like well-rounded, right? Everything's tying together. How is, how is that? Well, I, have, um, I have, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more of an experienced me. I have perspective on, you know, making bad decisions, good decisions. And, you know, when I notice when I, when I fast, I feel good. And when I feel good, I have better thoughts. And when I have better thoughts, my life's better. It's as simple as that. You're a product of your thoughts. That's about that, that book that I just read too is, is a lot on that. What you think you become. It's as simple as that. You know, you're the product of what you think about all day long. So uh -huh. if, I, if I feel good from taking care of my body and I'm feeding, so I feed my body, you know, with healthy foods, we, you know, broccoli and fish and, and so I'm taking care of my body. Then I feed my mind with books. You know, you're feeding your mind when you read books. It's as simple as that. And then spiritually, I'm feeding myself by what? Helping people, tithing. Uh, adding value to the workplace you can't help but to live a more fulfilled life when you do that and then you're living more up to your potential mm. yeah man 100 percent. i love it and and you know you're um obviously like like we all uh everyone has has a story right and and i think um chris you've ex you've shared some things man that, um, it, you know, I, I love um, having people on the show because from different backgrounds and different regions, because everyone, you know, shares things uh, in a different way. It kind of it, it's the same point, but it's it comes from a different place, you know. And so but we talk about this a lot. You know, it's like, you know, and having a, um, a daily routine. Yeah, there's some mornings I, I don't get up when I want to get up. Yeah, there's some mornings that I skip. You know, my, my routine is getting up. Uh, swimming, having my coffee, eating light. Um, but, you know, yeah, there's some mornings that um, that I don't get up. But I think that, you know, those of you that are struggling, I, you know, Chris hit it on the head. The first thing that you that I that that I think, I, you know, I would recommend from what Chris is saying and what I know is get a, da a healthy daily routine um, that includes waking up early, uh, you know, putting something good in your mind first thing, exercise. Um, obviously, you don't, I, I know why, you don't eat in the morning because that exercise, it kicks the metabolism up. You have more energy, you burn more fat, um, right? So those are things that uh, as you evolve in that, you start to, uh, you start to understand like why you're doing that kind of thing. Um, so, um, hey, so share with the people, let's, let's talk you know, we've talked obviously about some personal development, um, some some insight from you. Uh, what do you see is the biggest challenge with people that are wholesaling when they come to you? Because um, I, because I, you know, we will probably have uh, exacts on this. But what do you see is the biggest thing um, when they come to you that they need um, help with? You know, say say, oh well, it's leads. Right. Oh, I need better leads. I need to get I can get buyers, but I need properties or they or this. What do you see as the biggest issue? Man, it, it all goes back to my my brand. Right. What's my brand skills? Get the deals like what skills am I talking about? People skills, guys. All the wholesaling business is a marketing business. You know, the, the mechanics of how you generate leads is just mechanics. Anybody can do that. That's that's a that's not a variable. Like I can tell, show people how to do direct mail, how to do online PPC, Facebook ads, whatever it may be, bandit signs. That just gets the lead in front of you. That anybody can do that. What's the what's the most important thing, right? How do how do, the communication cycle with when when the person when the lead gets in front of you when you start the communication cycle, that's the most important thing right there. So you need to work on your people skills, and the way you work on your people skills is for one, read books on you know. Understand humans, right? Understand that you, you got to be more of a care, especially in this business. This is more of a, you're dealing with motivated sellers who are people that are distressed. You know, you're basically the highest paid counselor in this business. Like they don't really want to sell their house. They want to sell the house, but they really want somebody to talk to. I can't tell you when, you know, how many times I've sat with people for 30, 40, an hour, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, 
just letting them vent and talk, right? And being a really good communicator. I think if you're a really good communicator, that is the de facto variable which distinguishes good wholesalers or bad wholesalers from great wholesalers is how well they communicate. It's not how well they send direct mail. It's not how well, I mean, anybody can do that. Anybody can generate leads. Yep, absolutely. So what if uh, somebody is not a good communicator and maybe, you know, the, yes, everyone can become, you know, at a certain level, but we're all born with, with, you know, we, some people are just more talented. I mean, I'm never going to be as good as LeBron at hoop, even though I used to be able to dunk, but not anymore with the, with the, with the bad knee and hip. <laughs> well, not bad, but you know, but um, age, man, age, I'm almost 50. So the, the, you know, from that standpoint, if somebody is not a good communicator, what can they do? Um, you know, cause a lot of people think, oh, I need this, that, and they, they have a deal and they have um, a property, but they're really going to struggle because they just aren't a good communicator. They're not, you know, you, people call it sales, whatever it's sales, but they're just not good at sales. They're just not good at communicating. They're not good at people. They're not good at sales because they're not confident. And how do you build confidence? Personal development, right? If you work on yourself, your confidence level goes up. Therefore your communication level goes up. It's all relative. It all, it's all in sequence. Personal so, development equals. So work. people that aren't, people that aren't good communicators, what do you recommend that they, when they come in, how they can become a good communicator? So, like I said, personal development. If, if, you, if you understand human beings and you, well, for one, you got to be a good listener. You know, if, if you want to talk, you got to be more interested versus interesting. People go around and trying to be interesting all the time. Like they're trying to talk about themselves. Nobody gives a shit about what you got to say. They want to be listened to. So you got to be interested in people and stop being interesting. Right. So when I'm talking to people, I make them feel like they're the most important person on the planet. That's first. Right. I want them to know that I genuinely care and, and they have my attention and I'm asking very strategic questions about them to get them to talk about themselves. Then that gets them to open up and like me. Right. Mm -hmm. And from there, I can be real with them and talk to them and have really good dialect back and forth. Um, I think it's just a matter of being a good listener, but to be a good communicator, I think you got to have confidence, confidence in your ability to communicate with people comes from you being a highly evolved version of yourself. And how do you become a highly evolved version of yourself? Personal development. Mm -hmm. It all goes back to personal development. It does, man. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, you know, people, people would ask me like uh, sometimes, Hey DJ, why do you think, why do you see a lot of major league, uh, you know, baseball guys, their kids, like a lot of their kids make it to the major leagues. Right. And, um, and I tell them it's, it's simple. It's not because they're the most talented, even though, you know, it runs in the bloodlines and things, but people think, oh yeah, they're just born into that. No, it's because they mentally, they grew up around it. It's normal for them. It's a normal environment. Subconsciously, they belong there because, and they've already been there in their mind. So now it's just a matter of, you know, going through, you know, basically growing up and going through the process to them mentally, they already belong there. So, you know, um, you've heard of obviously the success cycle, yep. right? And how that works um, from a personal development side, what would you recommend that people um, do if they're, maybe um, uh, needing to fix themselves. What are some things they can do to start really um, getting better from a personal development side? Well, the first thing I would say is get out of the environment that you're in. Most people are, are, are held back by their environment. They, they may have a suppressive parent, friend, or a group of people or friends they hang around with that are basically holding them back from doing what they need to do because they – they're just doing stuff that's not ethical for one or just they're in secretly covertly, you know, invalidating everything they're doing or maybe they're getting beat up at school. Like you have to get out of that environment and get into a new environment around people that are that are just where you want to be for one. Um, then secondly, I'm sorry, I, I lost my chance. What was the question again? Oh, just some things that that what can people do if they want to get better work on themselves? Oh, and yes. Become yes. So then. After getting out of the environment, then the, the best way I know to get to work on yourself is read mindset books. My favorite mindset book, um, it, it was written back in like 1910 by a guy named uh, Wallace D. Waltz. 
It's called The Science of Getting Rich. Everybody thinks that Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich is the original mindset book. It's not. That book actually was the derivative of Wallace D. Waltz's The Science of Getting Rich, which is a phenomenal, quick, easy read, all on mindset. If you read that book, I've read that book probably seven, eight times. I read it at least tw- once or twice a year, just to refresh on it. But I would, I'd read, I'd read that book. I would read um, this, you know, uh, the one by Napoleon Hill. I would read the the compounding. This I'm gonna just give you all the the books that I, that I get my students to read. The first book I have them read is the Science of Getting Rich. The second book I have them read is the Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Yeah. The third book I have them read is the Slide Edge. Then the next book I have them read is Everyone Communicates But Few Connect. That's by uh, who's the guy that Grant just interviewed? Max. Max his name's uh, John Maxwell. He wrote that yep, book. yep. It's a great book on communication skills. It breaks down people. Um, then the 10X Rule by Grant Cardone, which goes over action and the, what kind of levels of action you need to take. And then The One Thing by Gary Keller. You ever heard of yep. the one thing? That's a, a phenomenal book. Um, so I have them read, and I have them read, um, what's that last book on negotiations by Chris Voss? Um, Never Split the Difference to help them with their negotiation skills. So that's the five, there are five or six books that I have my, right when you get in my program, that's the five, six books I have you read, which is, you know, the first books are on mindset. The second books are on, you know, which the science of getting rich and think and grow rich on mindset. The next set of books, which is the compound effect and the slight edge is all about what you talked about earlier, routines and daily habits. Mm-hmm. So if you got your mindset right. Then you get your d- routines and daily habits in. And then the next book is what Grant Cardone's 10 X rule, which is all about action. Mm-hmm. Once you get your mindset right and you're doing the right daily routines, if you take massive amount of action on, on those things that you're already doing that are the right habits and routines, then your life's just going to expand just by those books. Right. If you just implement those books, your life will blow up. Wow, man, that, that, that really ties it all together as far as, uh, you know, the, from the uh, personal development side. Um, yeah, man, I love it. So, so, um, I still, it's still so cool to me, man, about your, about you hustling baseball cards, man. Like I used to, Um, I I used to do that all the time. Like I would, I would sell them on the future rating of their rookie card. Like, man, this is, this is Todd Zio. This is, you know, he's fresh out of college. He's going to get rookie of the year and uh, he's awesome. And it's only worth, you know, $2 and 50 cents. And, and, and the, what was it? The Beckett, it was Beckett. What, what we used to look yeah, at. Yeah. Yeah. Beckett. Yeah. Be- the Beckett. Uh, uh, yeah, man, the Beckett, the Beckett baseball guy was, uh, uh, yeah. Where you could find, um, find, find values. Um, so hey, uh, and you know what, uh, Chris, the Beckett guy, uh, I haven't looked at mine in a long time, but uh, my rookie card was a was a '93 Bowman. Um, you know, I don't know what, probably worth like I don't know, ten cents or a buck or. Right, know, right, right. But uh, so you used to sell them based on their future value. The future value, I, I would say. Look, um, you know this this card right now is is you know worth you know fifty cents, but it's going to be worth ten dollars in the next two years because this guy is just so good. And I said, I tell yeah. you what. But I'll sell it to you for five dollars right now. <laughs> you know, I was just hustling baseball cards, right? And some of them, like they, they were worth a lot of money. Like I sold a, I sold a Shaquille O'Neal card, a rookie card, um, and uh, for like you know a couple bucks more than what I paid for. It ended up being worth like twenty, twenty-five bucks within two years. And you see the, you see the wall behind me. I see. I was seeing that when you were talking. I was checking that out. Um, I have a uh, uh, Alkay line. I don't know if you can see this one. Uh, I mean, it's out of the way right here. That's the uh, remember the Del the Del Murphy rookie. Yes, Del yep. Murphy. I got uh, Bo Jackson, uh, Greg Maddox. It's funny. I had someone walk in and go, "Dude, that's I have a um, a uh, uh, Joe Morgan, uh, Frank Robinson rookie, Raleigh Fingers rookie." I had someone walk in that knew baseball, right? And they're like, "Dude, that's like a two hundred dollar card, man." And I'm like. Yeah, most people don't know. Like, what is a clean lady going to take it? You know, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, man, I it's it. So I have um, that's just energy, man. That's the 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 energy, man. I I grew up around and I um you know love baseball. It's part of my DNA. So uh, you know, 
it's it's awesome. It's like living back in the day. I mean, it's it's I love that. Well, people people ask me, why do you have your office set up like and you can see my picture up here. Um, but um, there's a uh, up there. Yep. But but people ask me, um, you know, Chris, why do you have your office set up the way you do where you have the baseball stuff in the back? You have up here uh, Fortune Foreclosures, which is our real estate investment company and awards and things. And then here uh, forward flipping on demand. And I tell them, this is part of me. This is my my past that helped form me. This is um, my my um, current and, and what I've done for many years. And then this, the academy, mentoring, helping, teaching, coaching is, is my future. Yep. So it's like, you know, I, I've only had a couple people ask, but. Uh, and they're like, oh, man, that's pretty cool. You know, it's just kind of a symbol um, how I how I look at life, you know. Yeah. Um, and so but those are those are some great books, man. I'm a, I wrote those down. There's a couple of those that I haven't um, even read that I'm going to dig into. So from people that are watching this, obviously, a lot of people know who you are, man. Um, and people that are watching this to say, hey, how can I um, get in touch with Chris? Um, what kind of, uh, uh, what can he help me with? You know, obviously, um, I agree with you 100%. Um, I, you know, I don't believe in, I think, um, conventional flipping, obviously market predicated, you can hit a home run like you did. Right. But then, um, not often. It, it, oh, not often. And it's, it's not like it is on TV. Right. You, they go, what do you, what do you mean that I got to replace the gas line? To, you know, what do you mean? Uh, what's, co what's a code officer? I got a note from a code office. You know, like there's all these things that people aren't talked, told, um, you know, pr pulling permits and, you know, just all the, the craziness that, that goes they, in it. They, glor they glorify flipping on, on all these TV channels. Like it's so sexy. It ain't that sexy. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> you can really lose your, lose your tail, man. Pretty, pretty fast. So, um, so conventional flipping, not a good thing. Wholesaling, obviously, um, you know, being able or a version of wholesaling, um, like what we do, you get where you're not using your own money. You guys, if you're watching this, Chris hit it on the head. Like the, if you want to leave your job, if you're looking to, uh, get into something, uh, I agree 100%. Um, you know, the wholesaling, a wholesaling uh, derivative where you're, you can make money in real estate, have help and guidance and not have to use your own money. So for people that are watching this, buddy, that want to get uh, to see like what you do, uh, what you're about. I'm going to post your website on the screen right now for them. Um, it's www. And those listening on the podcast, if you want to go to it, it's www.chrischrisrude.com. R O O D dot com. Um, but Chris, share with the people on here, um, you know, what, why don't you share some, uh, uh, maybe a couple of success stories of, you know, I know some of them, but some students that, um, that came in that you were able to really help. I, absolutely. I, I'll share with you my top student. He's, uh, he's out of Canada. He had a flipping business. He's been flipping for 12 years and he hated his life, right? He was flipping. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was making good money. He was making a lot of money, but like he was constantly chasing his money because as soon as it would close, he'd have to take that money and put it into the next rehab job. And he hooked up with me at GrowthCon last year. He went a lot, of, lot of stress. Yes, a lot of stress. Uh, just you know, keeping all everybody motivated, keeping his subs, to, getting them to show up. Um, what happened was he met me at GrowthCon. Is like, and he's from Canada, right? He he wasn't sure if, if wholesaling in Canada was even legal. So he took a shot on it and he bought my program and I worked with him and he made, he made a half a million dollars in seven months net. And when he was before he was chasing all his money doing these rehabs, he started making, I mean, a quick nickel beats a slow dime any day of the week. I don't care how you, how you cut it. Right. I'd rather make 10 grand in two weeks than 40 grand in six months. Any day. Mm -hmm. of the week. Absolutely. And, and when you, and, and you know, Chris, when you look at you, when you look at the time, Right. When someone says, oh, well, I did a flip and I made 40 grand. OK, how much time did you have into it? Yep. Well, I had three hundred and forty hours and you yep. break that down into what they made. Right. And then you look at the, the oh, I made t I only made 10 K, but I had, you know, three, two hours into it. You made five grand an hour. Yep. So big difference, man. Oh, 100 percent. It, it's just the difference with trading your time for money versus trading value and equity when you're wholesaling. You're trading your time for money when you're flipping. Um, now they got people that got it figured out and they got massive crews, but I mean, the bigger, the, 
the bigger your crews and the bigger your machine, that the more parts that can fail and just people not showing up, people on drugs, just all kind of stuff. I'm sure you've dealt with it. I've dealt with oh. it. I, I just rather wholesale and hotel. And if you don't know what wholesaling is, I'd rather find a property that doesn't need a lot of work, but I buy it so discounted and it's in a great area where I just throw it back on MLS discounted and I wholesale it to a full retail buyer. So if I buy a property that's worth, say, 200 grand and I can pick it up for 120 and it's just dated and it doesn't, it just needs to be rehabbed. I'll take that property and just throw it back on MLS for 155 and then a retail buyer will come in and buy it and rehab it themselves. And I'll make, you know, I don't have to do anything to it and I'll make, you know, a quick 30, 35 grand or maybe 28 after realtor fees. And I didn't do anything to it. Um, that's kind of my method. I, we wholesale and wholesale. I don't really, I, I only do a flip if it's an absolute grand slam home run, no way I could lose. And I can make like 60 to 80 grand and it's quick. Like it's maybe only like a month, two to four week rehab job. Yeah. I'm with you, man. I, uh, I yeah, I had my share of, uh, of say, yeah, monitoring contractors, um, you know, finding people you could drive. Every, everyone starts out strong, right? All the contractors, are, you know, that people, when you bring them on, they start working with you, managers, whatever, everyone's always going to show their best, their best face up front. It's like, oh, they're great. Right. And then all of a sudden a month, two months, it's like a little more problems. They didn't show up. They didn't show up. So, I mean, yeah, man, try like trying to, and trying to go this alone, you know, wholesaling, flipping is just flat out suicide. Yep. Um, so fine. So, so this guy yeah. came in with you was yeah, flipping. Yeah. Yeah, he came in, he stopped flipping and he just started wholesaling everything. And it just, it changed his life. He's like, dude, like, I, why haven't I been doing this the whole time? It's like, wholesaling is where it's at. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm making less money, but I'm not really, I'm making more money because I've gotten all my time back and I can do way more deals. I'm only making five, 10, 15 grand a deal versus making, you know, 30 to 40 a deal. But I'm literally only have maybe two hours in every transaction versus like you said, having, you know, four or 500 hours and making 40 to 60 grand it's just it's, sc it's scalable yeah it's scalable yeah it's very scalable and you don't have to have a huge team um you can make a lot of money doing it and um yeah i mean that that's changed his life i've got i got a guy in my program that was 20 years old he barred he he's an amish guy right so he comes from very humble beginnings with amish and um they don't believe in a lot of stuff like electricity and his you know education, education. like he's very, you know he, didn't, he had like a seventh seventh grade education and um he wanted to learn how to wholesale. He borrowed the money from a friend of his and um, he was making like $20,000 a year and he was really down and out and depressing himself. Now he's making like $20,000 a month in my program. And wow. Uh, awesome. Just awesome stories. Like, I mean, so you, when you help people like that, it, it's, it's spiritual, right? You know, it, it feels good. You know, I, I like helping people. Um, do I like making money? Absolutely. I mean, I, I wouldn't do it if I didn't get paid, but it's, it's just a byproduct of helping people. You get paid. Right. I mean, at hundred percent. And you know, um, you and I are cut from, from the same cloth from, from that standpoint, it's like, and you know, like you, you hit it back on the head when you, um, you said something early on, uh, that I want to circle back with, you talked about feeling good, right? When you can put yourself in a feel good state, um, when you feel good, you look, you, you have more confidence, you have more energy, you, you have more, you have more of yourself to give and serve people. Yep. And you know, when, when you're not feeling, if someone's not feeling good um, and people pick up on that energy, right. They can pick up and say, Oh man, I like you ever get off the phone. It's like, man, I just really like this person. Yep. You know, I just, I feel really good about like, this is going to be a lifetime lifelong friend more than a client. And that's because it, that, that vibration, that energy matches. And yep. so, but you can't have that. You're not going to attract people um, at, you know, the, the kind of level that you want to be around. If you're a Debbie Downer, you yeah. know, gossiping, complaining, um, a victim, um, always looking at, you know, what's wrong with someone or what's wrong with something. Um, so um, but kind of off the off the, the, the subject. But let's get back to, to people that go to Chris So you're connected. You do some stuff with Grant. What do you do with Grant? So Grant, I have a show on his network called Into the Hustle on GCTV, where I just I do video content. I help people on how to wholesale, give tips and tricks on personal development, wholesaling, wholesaling, buy and hold, mobile home park investing, all the stuff that I do. Um, how 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 often is that show? 
uh, they update. It just depends on how much content I send them. Like I'll do video content and I'll just send it to them and they'll upload it onto a show. So sometimes, honestly, I've been slacking on it because I've been so busy with growth con, like getting ready for that. But typically I usually do a couple videos a week. Um, so what's, where, where can they find that at Chris? They can go to uh, GCTV um, and go to into the hustle or they can go on YouTube. I have a, a YouTube channel. I upload it onto YouTube. I upload it on a GCTV um, I sponsor GrowthCon with Grant. Um, I'm the 10X Platinum sponsor last year uh, you know, for, for GrowthCon. I'm the sponsor this year. If you want to go to Gro GrowthCon and you're interested in you know, getting coached by me, I'm giving out tickets to GrowthCon. So if you, you want to learn how to wholesale, you're going to get a free GrowthCon ticket with the uh, purchase of my coaching. I do a lot of content on um, Instagram. You can follow me there at, at Real Estate Rude. We do ton of content over there. So, um, yeah, man, it's just a matter of just helping people and being the best you and becoming the best version of yourself, man. And real estate is the vehicle that I make money. I, I don't, I, I would be good at anything. And don't take that as being, you know, cocky. It's just confidence, man. Like I, anything I do, I would be good at because I'm going to put my heart and soul into it. Hey man, it, it all, like people say, you could strip me of everything and I'll just, I'll just rebuild, you know? Um, it, it's, it's never, it's, it's cause that all comes internally mindset. Um, and, and obviously, um, having healthy relationships, good relationships with people. Um, so, so they, so on gctv.com, that's Grant's, uh, Cardone's TV show. Right. They can find, they can go in there. Uh, it's on the type, screen, right? Type in into the hustle, into the hustle. Okay. And then they can, uh, it'll pull up all of my videos and they can just watch a lot of those videos. Hey man, so listen, um, there, there's going to be, uh, you know, thousands of people uh, a week that see this, listen to it, watch it, hear it. Um, obviously great content, um, and, and really good stuff to, to share with people, you know, not just people obviously in real estate, even though that's what, you know, we're talking about, um, this relates to, to everything, right. To life. Um, if you're working a job, um, and you want to get out of the job, this is obviously uh, a great way, you know, wholesaling properties um, and getting with mentors and people that can teach you how to do it, uh, you know, to get that freedom and um, and to create that wealth that you want. Uh, because as you know, the cash flow quadrant, right? Yeah. If you, if you're if you're an, an, an E an employee or as self employed, yeah, you can make money, but getting into that that business owner. So if you start wholesaling and make money. Now you have money to go buy properties. That's now right. you can, now you can, now you can finally achieve the thing that Warren Buffett says, if you don't learn how to make money while you sleep, you work till you die, but you have to, you, you know what? So once you start making chunks of money in wholesaling, do you see your students turn around and buy, start buying their own investment properties now? I'm glad you're saying that. Cause that's what I was about to say. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about wholesaling is once you start building up cash and you just start taking down some of your own deals because you're not going to get any better deals than your own deals that come through your own pipeline where you're going to capture tons of equity. Um, I mean, you could literally become a real estate net worth millionaire within a couple of years by just keeping some of your deals that if you buy, you know, you could buy a property that's worth, you know, 200 grand, you pick it up for 80 to hundred grand and maybe put 20 grand into it. And you, or let's just say you put 40 grand into it, you into it for 120, you keep it as a rental property, but it appraises for 200 or 220. You just captured a hundred thousand dollars in equity. So on your balance sheet, that's a hundred thousand dollars of net worth added to your balance sheet. You do that over time. You could be a network. You do, you buy four or five of those a year and get you find some private money, which is money everywhere. You know, show them the deals that you, you, you can bring to the table and you can find private money. If you don't have good credit to do it, you can literally become a millionaire in real estate within a couple of years. Oh, I totally agree, man. Um, well, what do they say? Like 80, 80% 80 or I don't know. It's a high percent of, of people that have crazy high, crazy high number. Yeah. Become millionaires, did it through real estate. So, um, Hey, so you're going to be at, at the growth con, um, this year. Are you going to, you're going to be one of the sponsors. Um, that's in, uh, do you want to, do you want to, it's in Miami, uh, in February. So yeah, it's uh, February, February 1st through the 3rd. Um, I'm going to have a big booth set up um, for my sponsorship. You come by, pick up a hat, a shirt. I'm going to have a bunch of swag there. Come come hang out and come. Let's talk shop. Let's talk real estate. Let's talk how I can help you. Um, even if you don't even want to talk about wholesaling, if you want to just come talk to me. Come hang out and talk. I love I love people, man. I love networking with people and just talking and hanging out and making new relationships. And if you want to talk about 
real estate in general. We don't have to talk about wholesale. We could talk about rental properties if you want. We can talk about mobile home parks. I don't care. Just come hang out and say hello. Hey, man. So a quick question for you. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm wanting to take my team. Uh, I was just talking about it with my core team. There's a group of maybe like a handful of us at most, um, maybe three, four of us um, that I want to take um, to the growth con event. Um, I got to ask, man, uh, can you hook me up with some tickets at a D at a good price? Man, everybody asks me that. Here's the thing about Uncle, here's the thing about Uncle G. Uncle G don't give anything away for free. I, I can't even give discounts. <laughs> hey man, I'll I'll buy I'll buy them through you. Yeah. Um, I I paid full price. It ain't cheap to sponsor GrowthCon. I mean, it's I mean, it's a hundred thousand dollars to sponsor GrowthCon every year. You know, I dropped a hundred G's just to to put my banner and to sponsor that. And I get a you know he gives me a few tickets, but I mean, I paid for it. But it okay, it ain't it ain't free. Hey, like, hey, like we, like we were talking about, you said, Hey man, how, how much that 10 X hat costs? Yeah. <laughs> I said, I said, Hey, they were, they were 200 bucks, but they were on sale for 10. You go, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey. Um, and so uh, any, any last thing, buddy, that, um, you know, you, you want to share with people or obviously I've shared with people how to get in touch with you, um, you know, through social media, but Hey, you guys, I, like, I, I just want to say, you know, I, I have a lot of people on DJ Thing Live. The show has really taken off and blown up. And I've been wanting to have Chris on um, for a while. And uh, he was gracious enough to make time uh, to come on today. Um, semi last second, um, basically last second. Yeah. Uh, and so um, I really appreciate that, buddy. So anything you want to leave people with um, as you know, uh, what, before we sign off here? Yeah, if you want to catch my book, you can get a free copy. Or if you want to buy it on Amazon, The Source of the Deal. Or if you want a free ebook, go to www.thesourceofthedeal.com and get a free copy of my ebook. If you want to learn how to wholesale and you're on a budget and, um, and you can't really hire a mentor. And the second thing I want to leave you with is guys, just, you know, if you don't have any money, you know, or if you just have a little bit of money, just go, go broke on yourself, guys. Go broke on yourself first. Like spend every penny you got into your, yourself and personal development in your mind. And your life will explode eventually. Um, that that that's what I that'd be my final words. Just go broke on yourself. It, it, max out all your credit cards and put it all into your mind. If you, if all you got is five hundred bucks, go buy five hundred dollars worth of the best books that you can get your hands on and deep dive those and just deep dive personal development and get into mm -hmm. real estate. <laughs> And get into real estate. Yeah. Hey, man, I, I agree with you on that. So, hey, man, thanks for being on the show today, buddy. Um, I put the, uh, you know, th those of you that want to get uh, Chris's um, free ebook uh, on the source of the deal uh, for free, you just go to www.thesourceofthedeal.com. I put it on the screen here for those watching um, live on Facebook or YouTube here. Um, and then those of you that are listening to the podcast, just go ahead and go there. Definitely recommend this book. Um, go out and get it, you guys. And just want to say thanks, buddy. I really appreciate you being on the show today, man. And um, stay on with me here, and uh, yep. I'm going to sign off. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, guys.